the wall looks crazy. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from beautiful, gorgeous Lviv, Ukraine, the biggest city in Western Ukraine, and it's the prettiest city in the country. There's many different UNESCO World Heritage sites here. Uh, it dates back to like 12 something, you know, a lot of uh, 16th century Renaissance style buildings. And today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you on an epic ultimate food tour of the city. We're gonna jump to like six, seven different spots. We're gonna have food, we're gonna have drinks, we're gonna have coffee. Diana. Hey guys, I'm Diana from the Central <laughs> City Tour Guy. We are in the Rinox Square, the heart and soul of Lviv. To my left, the city hall, and around us there are 45 buildings that are on UNESCO heritage list. Here are there are lots of coffee houses, lots of museums, lots of restaurants, four different quarters around the Rinox Square. Catholic, Armenian, Jewish, and Orthodox. We're gonna explore them all today. Enjoy and stay with us. I just got here, I'm a little lost, but I love this city. It's really, really pretty. This reminds me, like I was telling her, like of Krakow in Poland, very similar style. Obviously, you were saying something about, it's like Galician, right? So what Galician. is Ga what is Galician? So it's a long story. The name of the principality was Halicina, and there was a capital, the city called Halic, and the word Halic derives of the Greek word Halus, which means salt. <laughs> this land was rich on salt. So we are in eastern Halicina, and Krakow is west and Halicina. During Habsburg's empire, Austro-Hungarian, this territory was called Galicia as well. All right guys, enough talking, let's go eat. This is my favorite part of the city. It's the Catholic quarter next to Roman Catholic Cathedral of Assumption of Our Lady from the 15th century. Though this place was surrounded by the cemetery, there are pearls of architecture here. This building is the burial chapel of a Hungarian family called Boim. Early 17th century, they buried their 14 family members, but that's a masterpiece of architecture in Renaissance and uh, Mannerism style. Have you heard about Mannerism? No, but I'm about the Hungarian, Magyar. <laughs> <laughs> so once you pass the Hungarian chapel, you keep walking, there's a few different coffee shops, and right here we have Amadeus. This, you know, yellow, cover right very nice food this is a vip restaurant the quality is exceptional you can have here ukrainian and european food and also amazing coffee and pastry this is a really traditional rustic restaurant as soon as you walk in you'll see to the right you have a dining hall to the left you have the bar and then deeper in another dining hall and they have wines from the area and they also have a mixed menu like she said but what we're doing is more like a Lysian style so that is you know like she was talking about the like kingdom right and obviously this was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire so a lot of food that relates to me because my grandfather is from Cluj he's a Hungarian from Cluj my grandmother is from northern uh, Hungary from Sedench so I can't wait to eat this food this is gonna be amazing wow this place is beautiful so lots of wines and the wines in the Carpathian the mountains that's what I really want to try we're sitting here with the owner and he's so funny he's like telling me the whole story about the restaurant so this was the monks quarters this building belonged to the cathedral and right now we're starting off with some garlic with some toast right and then here we have a beautiful salad so arugula avocados tomatoes onions oh I can't wait I'm so hungry mm. so it's like a what is that? Well, lots of garlic. So it's like lazy, garlicky sauce. You have two different breads. Now it's Jabal the salad. Oh, I need this. I need to break my fast. Me and Diana have both haven't eaten today. Mmm. <laughs> nice and light, crunchy, and juicy. Love the avocado. Oh wow. So what are we drinking here? This is basically homemade vodka. Right? Yes, which has more degrees than regular vodka. More degrees. And we say Budmo in Ukrainian. Budmo. 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 Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's super strong, but mm, it's nice. It's crisp. I'll have another glass for sure. <laughs> yeah, so this is just like a European salad, right? Something green to start you off. Mm. Man, that vodka was good. It was actually some of the best because sometimes here in Ukraine, well, not sometimes, most times, they add spices. This one's like no spice, just pure. Man, that woke me up. 
It's like having Rocky in the morning in Albania. You have Rocky and you wake up. <laughs> Very nice dressing and the speciality of these salads are high quality vegetables. They are juicy, they are fresh, they are sweet enough. For example, bell pepper or sweet pepper is amazing. Cucumbers, all this greenery. They are very, very tasty. Everyone who visits Ukraine, we always would point out that we have amazing high quality vegetables. So it makes the taste of the salad exceptional. Enjoy. So basically all the vegetables here is farm the table from Ukraine, except the avocado. Obviously it's more of a tropical vegetable. Loving this. And by the way, he was telling me that what they added here is some honey, right? That's why it's a little sweeter. That's why I love it, it's delicious. And we're gonna have some borscht. And you said the borscht is a little different, right? Everywhere in Ukraine is different. And here we go, the borscht. A little different this one, right? So we have dill, sour cream, we have some big beans, oh, so good. Cabbage, also beetroot, always beetroot. Then you have the beef broth and his beef as well. And on the side, we have this beautiful bread with dill on top and garlic. Oh yes, this is gonna be so good. Mm. She's like, it's tastier than a cube. No, it's super tasty. I love the dill, it's a different you know, aspect to it, right? I haven't had that on top before. Always sour cream, that's part of Ukrainian culture, right? Mm. Oh, it's nice and light. It's more of a soup, like you said. It's less of a stew. Because the other ones I had in Kiev, way less soup. Try together with this one. Mm -hmm. Got a big bite. Mm. Lots of garlic here. Mm. Oh, it's so fluffy. So easy to eat. The best part about this is so many vegetables. It's so healthy, right? And this is the best thing to have, especially in winter, right? When it's really cold outside. In the summer as well. In summer as well. Remember, borscht, not borscht soup, not borscht stew. Borscht, and that is Ukrainian. Nowhere else, right? Mm. If you're from the Astro-Hungarian Empire, you love cabbage. I do. I grew up with it, man. The cabbage rolls, oh. Can't stop eating them. All right, take this away from me. <laughs> I finished my plate. I have to finish mine because the main course is coming, but I have to get these beans. Oh, there they are. Mm. The beans, the dill. Mm. Oh, a little sweet. I love the color too. Very pink. Obviously beaver, right? You're not supposed to do this, but I love like soaking up the soup. Mm. Put it all in. Mm -hmm. Oh, the amount of garlic and dill? Oh, incredible. Alright, I'm finishing up. Main course? Hungry husband's dish. Hungry husband's dish. When a dish. hungry husband comes back home and he wants to eat, he needs a lot of protein. So he gets a lot of meat and vegetables. This is a duck baked, Absolutely. right? Right. Duck with apple. And what type of sauce do we have? Here? Special apple sauce. Apple sauce, amazing. I'm so excited to try this. So we have incredible, wow, so soft, so soft. So tasty. So tasty, right? I'm just gonna add some of this. I know, I know. Can't wait. Mm. Juicy, moist, mm, the sauce. Wow, so you're saying everywhere, Western Ukraine, this sauce. And we're also trying, this is lemonade with berries. Mm. Oh wow, so many berries in here. Strawberry, raspberry, blueberry. Exactly. Then you even have basil and blueberries on top. The sauce is so good, guys. You have no idea. The beef here, wow. My friend, this is the dish. Mm. It's so tasty, I haven't even tried the vegetables yet. I can only have one piece of this. It's too good, but I still have duck. So this area, of Eastern Europe, a lot of duck, right? Yes. Hungary, obviously we're all about a duck, foie gras every day. Oh, this is gonna be so, I love how they do the duck because it's like slow cooked, nice 
sweet, lazy sauce on top. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. It is ridiculous. Outside, a little crispy, right? Inside, super juicy. Mmm, sweet. It's called gastronomical orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna destroy this duck. It is absolutely incredible. Mm, too tasty. Wow. People like rave about pecking duck in China. You gotta say Eastern European duck. Mm. The way you guys do it, you guys can be about the wings or the drumsticks. And about these. I'm in love with this duck. As you get in, you get some fat. Mm. It's been so like, wow, the tenderness. It literally falls off the bone. My friend, Budmo. <laughs> Budmo. Budmo. Prosh. This food is incredible. Wow. If you come to the city, you don't come to this restaurant, you weren't here. Or at least you didn't eat here. <laughs> We're gonna go to a patisserie by the Golden Star, where the first kerosene lamp was invented. She's too funny, and he owns it as well, right? Yes. This guy is the boss here. This is the boss at Lviv. Wow, the weather has changed, huh? It was freezing earlier, now it's perfect. The more you eat, the better uh, the that, weather gets. <laughs> that's why we eat the duck. <laughs> so right now we're passing by the Opera Theater, which is the very end. This is the historical center. Gorgeous, love it. So many people. Oh, the weather here is amazing right now. Now you will die. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Me too. So many cakes and chocolates and liqueurs. It's so beautiful. So much chocolate. Lots of chocolate here in Lviv. Death by chocolate. Death by chocolate, right? <laughs> so this is the pharmacy or was the pharmacy with the first... Kerosene lamp invented here in 1853. Here is okay. the portrait of the owner of this pharmacy, Mikolaj. Wow. Here are two pharmacists who invented the particle of kerosene and there is a portrait of Franz Joseph, the Austrian emperor. But today it's a patisserie. Incredible. So we have quiches, we have cakes, yes. what else? Just lots of different pastries, sweets, and we have some liqueurs. Yes. So what are we coffee. trying? So this is basically a pharmacy cafe museum. As you walk in, that's where everything is, right? So they have foie gras, they have cakes, they have chocolate, they have liqueurs, and coffee as well. You go to the right, it's like a you know dining area, chill area, then you can walk upstairs and upstairs, it's more of a museum, right? So you have uh, Rockefeller up there, who else do you have, the, the lady? Helena Rubinstein. Okay, the owner's like really done his homework and bought old school stuff from the era, right? Right. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try one, two, three, four, five different things. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's famous here, you yes. said. What is this? This is called Galician Cheesecake. It has nothing to do with New York creamy style cheesecake. This is typical of the area, cottage cheese, rather like ricotta cheesecake. And it's the same story as with Ukrainian borscht. Every single lady knows the recipe of her own sirnik, we call it, or cheesecake. In this particular case, we have a Galician cheesecake which has chocolate on top, but inside you have raisins and you have lemon peel. So what else do we have? Cherry liqueur in a chocolate cup. Okay. We have a very famous chocolate creamy janduja cake. We have a kind of eclair mm -hmm. with right. cream and fruit that has, has its own name. And then over here? And we have amazing handmade chocolates with rum and nut inside. So what do you want to try chocolate. first? Uh, I think you should have to start <laughs> with, with the, the cheesecake. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is the area, right? Yes. The dessert of the area. Galicia is rich on different recipes from mm -hmm. Austria, Hungary, Poland, mm. Jewish recipes, Armenians. So all nations that lived here, they brought into the local cuisine. So cheesecake, you have a lot of citrus flavors here, obviously. Orange, right? Chocolate crust. Eggs. It's, you definitely it, have uh, eggs. You, you know, have butter in it. It's it, creamy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Mm. Just can have it instead of breakfast. <laughs> this and coffee? Yes, perfect. it's a perfect Galician breakfast. Let's try this guy. Budma. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's sweet but it's it's potent, right? 
as the Spanish would say, que rico. Que rico. <laughs> and the best part about it, you do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, que rico. Rich. Mm, super rich. Full of taste. Mm -hmm. and flavor. Que rico. Que rico. Que rico. Como rico. Puerto Rico. Exacto, exactamente. Es que hablas español. Yo hablo español también. It's, a, it's chocolate mousse, but with like a lot of layers here. Mm. So what is that? Mm. Caramel? It has caramel. Mm -hmm. It has nuts layer on the bottom. So caramel, nuts. And chocolate cream. And chocolate cream. Wow, it's different. I mean, just the, the shape is very different. I've never seen one like this. Chocolate overdose. <laughs> I think I'm gonna jump on one of these. So it's white chocolate with nuts, right? Yes, but there is a cream with rum inside okay. oh. and something else you have to take. If you're in the Ukraine, you're drinking every day. <laughs> Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah. That rum. I personally love white chocolate and nuts. This is amazing. I'm taking this home. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like a special cream. There's strawberries. Wow. Ruining the structure. <laughs> no, don't worry. Just get. I'm gonna get some of that whipping cream from the bottom. Maybe get a strawberry. Mm. This is the best. It's so fluffy. Mmm. Oh wow, it's like a, I've had something similar like this. Obviously I've had a lot of like uh, creamy pastries, mm -hmm. but this is different. What's the name of this one? Saint Honoré. Saint Honoré, okay. This is amazing. And we have coffees, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, it was great. Well, that was extremely decadent. That was delicious. I will take two more of these. Two more? No, it's okay. <laughs> a glass and a glass is fine. Uh, I'm getting a liquor. This guy's the man. As you can see, there's five different liquors behind me. This one's cherry. Mmm. Ice cold. Mmm. Oh. Sweet. It's, it's almost like... With my nose. Yeah, right? Means I'll drink. Okay. I'm ready to go. Sapidum curat in Latin means uh, tasty cures. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank oh, amazing, you. amazing. Thank you. So what is this called? This is the administrative center of the city called the Avenue of Freedom or Liberty or Svobody. Prospect Svobody. So over there we have the Opera House, over here we have a monument. The monument to Ukrainian national poet Taras Shevchenko. What is that? It looks like an old gate over there. Horse-driven carriages like in Austria. We were a part of Austro-Hungarian Empire, so we used to move in carriages. This is the opera in front of us, Opera Square, and there's like basically, what, Mozart, different... Vivaldi, all classical music. Mm -hmm. Just being played, amplified here. Yeah. It's amazing. So this is where everybody gets together and just hangs around, right? Just walks. We stroll down the avenue. Uh, over here we have some like water spouts, Fountain, fountain. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. I love the opera. This is again, this is more like Astro-Hungarian, right? So it yes. looks very like Vienna-like right here. The architect was Polish. His name is Zygmunt Gorgolewski. The opera was built just in three years, 1897-1900. And it was the first building in the city that used electrical lights. Wow. And before, this avenue had a river called Poltva. So when the opera was built, the river went underground and it became a city Suez. This is a handcraft or artisan market in Lviv where you can buy souvenirs, handmade things, embroidered clothes, uh, wooden things, clay things. So it's the place where you purchase souvenirs and enjoy the pieces of art as well. All right, let's go in here. Let me see if I find anything for my kids. I really want something made of wood, like the symbol of either Ukraine or of Lviv. Oh wow, this is beautiful. And this is for kids, right? This is for kids as well. These are traditional Ukrainian clothes, embroidered, handmade clothes that we wear for Ukrainian holidays such as Easter, Christmas, and for the Day of Independence. So we're buying some gifts for my kids. Beautiful, love it. Yeah, yeah. So always buy like one or two sizes bigger. You don't want it to be too small, ever. 
that's yeah. that's the shortest sleeve, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's one longer. This is short. That's beautiful. I love the embroidery. Take this. Yeah, yeah. We take it. So I bought for my niece, my two daughters, and for my wife, and it came out to twenty four hundred, which is roughly ninety U.S. dollars. It's a great deal. Always support the locals. Don't go and buy random stuff. Go and support the locals. These ladies are making this themselves. Obviously, yeah. not handmade. Machine, Machine right? Machine made, yes. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> Prosh, buddy. Jakuyu, jakuyu, jakuyu. Okay, my friends. So, yeah. well, it got a little hot. Okay. Just put this on. So this is for men. This is handmade, and it's a thousand five hundred. But it is gorgeous, and obviously, it goes with my eyes. <laughs> Blue, right? Wow. Ukrainian man. So now I'm Ukrainian man, right? Really, really Ukrainian. And then you will say Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraini. Hello, I am Slava. <laughs> I am Slava. I am Slavic. Very, very nice. Hungarian here. It's very nice. How's it look? Good? Very good. Very nice. Totally so, Ukrainian. So it's a thousand five hundred, so roughly like fifty U.S. dollars, but obviously handmade. As you can see, everything here was stitched by hand. It is gorgeous. Yeah, I take it. Is it tomorrow's embroidery day? Yes, everybody will be dressing up in embroidery. And well, I will have an embroidery too. I love it. Gorgeous. This is perfect. Okay. Discount, discount. Well, I already <laughs> gave coffee for a woman and for you. Yeah. I just had coffee. <laughs> so in this next section, we have the women actually sewing the embroidery. But this is not uh, clothing. This is uh, for tablecloth? Or? Table clothes for Easter baskets we have, for wedding we have. These are not bras. These are face masks, handmade, embroidered. <laughs> this is all Carpathian. Carpathian? So, yes, that was made from... Uh, from wood and you can use it in your kitchen so you don't use metal you use wooden like spoons uh, while you are cooking and if you guys don't know what Carpathians are that is the mountains south of here we're going there in a few days and that basically is the border with a few different countries incredible look at this love everything here oh wow even the mugs the mugs this, this is, is incredible the smell of the Carpathians <laughs> you put a pan or a kettle and then it smells. So this wood comes from the Carpathian, but he makes it here. He is the wood carver, right? Yep. And, you know, obviously Lviv is the city of lions, not cats, lions. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to a beer festival later in this trip. Ten, so 300 for this is like roughly like $11. I think it's worth it. Pretty amazing. Oh, smells incredible. Okay, my friend, chuckle you. Boom. You can be in there forever. You can buy tons of things. Look at that, even beautiful purses. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the coffee mining. Coffee mining, yes. This is a really cool experience here in Lviv. Nowhere else in the world do they have something like this. We're gonna have coffee, but it's gonna be very unique. In the coffee mine. Exactly. According to the legend, Lviv coffee comes from the mine. It doesn't grow on the trees, it comes from the mine. <laughs> Lesa Ukrainka Street, but the people call it here 100 Pubs Street. This is the street with the highest concentration of restaurants, coffee houses and pubs. The clock that goes in the contraclockwise direction in the passage called Parajanov. Parajanov was a famous producer. This is amazing, look at this. Counterclockwise, so it's always the opposite. What is this? Armenian Cathedral of Assumption of Our Lady, dated back to 1363. Wow. It has the paintings of the early 20th century of the famous artist who immigrated to the United States. His name is Jan Henrik Rosen. The cathedral is active. The community of Armenian dates back to the 14th century and today we have about 1,500 Armenians who live in our city. We are in the square called Museum Square which has the building of the church of the 18th century and the former monastery which is a museum. It all belonged to Dominican monks and it was built in the style of Baroque according to the project of the Flemish architect Jan de Witt. Made it back here to Rotnak Square and right here we have the coffee mining. Let's go get some coffee. Yeah. I need one. I'm tired. As soon as you walk into coffee mining, the first room is where you can buy coffee. Next room is a souvenir shop. Really beautiful. So many different things. Coffee mugs. You have like little glasses for your coffee. And over here is the coffee mining. And this is the man whose name is Franz George Kulczycki. He was from Lviv region and he opened up the first coffee house in Vienna after the Battle of Vienna in 1683. No claustrophobia. Hello. Hello. How are you? 
That's the greatest coffee miner in the city, and he will tell you where to make a wish. Okay, so I gotta put a helmet on my head. Yeah. See that? Easy. It's dark in here, huh? But now you are the miner to mine for the coffee. Yeah, guys, be careful down here. But I love this experience. You're not just drinking coffee. You're doing coffee mining. Yes, coffee beans are everywhere. They grow from the walls also. Wow, <laughs> the wall is crazy. That's so much fire. So he's basically melting the sugar. Two minutes? Yes. Yes, because this cup is very hot. You need to wait a couple of minutes, take a spoon, eat the caramel, like creme brulee, and then drink your coffee. This is probably the coolest coffee I've ever seen. I mean, I've never seen them basically nuke sugar on top of the coffee. So you gotta let it settle, wait a few minutes, let it settle two minutes already. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's like creme brulee, right? Ooh, it's gonna be hot. Mmm. Oh. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Wow, nice and frothy. Still really hot though. Mmm, the caramel. Caramelo. And now drink it, right? Mm hmm. Oh, so nice. So basically, it's like a, they put milk in here. So it's more like a cafe con leche or cortadito, right? But with that on top, right? That's the experience. Come down here, it's like a mine, right? Super dark. Everybody's getting nuked, lit up, and you have coffee. I'm ready to go. This is the place where you make wishes. Usually, the wishes to come back to me. Jaco you. Jaco you. Jaco you. Amazing. A beautiful terrace where you can also have coffee, but they don't ever seal it here. So you can never have this fire show upstairs. We are in Serbska Street or Serbian Street, and here we have Lviv handmade chocolate manufacturer, a paradise for children and adults. All right, so let's go inside and try some chocolates. So many chocolates here in Lviv. All right, so as soon as you walk in, you're gonna order some hot chocolate, you can order some coffees, keep walking, and you're gonna go up to the stairs. Before you up, go up the stairs, you can actually see the guys making chocolate right here. So white chocolate, you know, milk chocolate, go upstairs and there's a lot of chocolate. It's like a chocolate shop, right? Huge. Oh, welcome to the chocolate world. <laughs> <laughs> this is chocolate heaven. How many different chocolates here? Easily like say Several over. Several dozens, yeah. milk, white and mixed and dark chocolate. Yeah, each area is like nine different ones, right? At least. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try one or two really quick. I'm really full yeah. still. <laughs> we had a lot of cakes earlier. <laughs> So that's good. With cream and alcohol, but it's more milk chocolate and it has a coffee bean on top. It's called Impreza. Okay. If you've been to India, you know what is uh, uh, love art is. So this is Kama Sutra. Here we have it in chocolate. <laughs> this shop is ridiculous. I mean, never ending chocolate. Just like a chocoholic's dream. We're gonna go outside and we're gonna try the chocolate. I got VIP access. I'm going inside to see where they make the chocolate. This is it. What's up guys? How you doing? Oh wow, so we're making chocolate. What do we have here? Just milk chocolate? Okay, so basically what they're doing is they're making chocolate. That's it. You see the dark chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate. Now I'm gonna try some chocolate. It's awesome. So I'm having hot chocolate with almond shaves on top. This is gonna be so good. It's way better with almonds, right? Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. Wow. You know what? I'll drink it. It's a lot. It's thick. It's ridiculous. I love it because it's made right behind us. You can bring your kids here because they are making also uh, the classes, workshops. Mm -hmm. Not only for kids but for adults too. So you can learn to make your own chocolate. Wow. This is absolutely incredible. I'll drink the whole thing. Live with the serotonin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's really thick though. It's super thick. Jaku you. Jaku you. Hey, Jaku you. Jaku you. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Right, I'll have the chocolate later because right now I'm in a chocolate coma. Leopold von Sacher Maza is an Austrian writer who was born in Lviv in 1836. His most famous works were Venus in Furs and Platonic Love. His name gave the term to masochism. So we're going to a, a masochism shop here? This mask. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like whip me. I don't care, I'm the guy. They always whip me. 
the place where you get whipped. The coffee house, the hotel, and the shop where you're whipped and you're exposed. <laughs> Mr. Hoffman, this is your chair. So basically, if you're into manichism, come here. Buy yourself a whip, buy yourself uh, something for your mouth, right? Or you can just buy a souvenir. They also have a coffee shop, restaurant, and a hotel. So if you go to the coffee shop, order a coffee, order some food, they'll whip you, right? You can also stay in the hotel, literally right here. And yeah, this is the shop, right? This is all part of the same group that exactly. owns all these That's places. That's the same network. Awesome. Yeah, so 50 Shades of Grey in Lviv. Yes, exactly. <laughs> From 1836, when this gentleman was born, Leopold von Zacher Mazo. All right, we're gonna go downstairs because seeing it's really, really cool. We can't miss it. <laughs> so down here we have a private room for private parties. No torture down here though. <laughs> all right, it's nice. Whip me again. Damn, true. <laughs> Hey, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for Cherry, we've been whipped so severely. Oh my god. Oh my god. And now I know like what like real torture is like. <laughs> my back, she whipped me so hard. Is it we're gonna have some cherry liqueur basically? Oh, it smells good in here. Wow, look at all the barrels in the back. It's great. So the ceiling, as you can see, it's like a chandelier of bottles. Crazy, amazing. This is awesome. Okay. okay, this is cherry like liquor, right? You didn't say a magic word, Budmo. Budmo. Budmo, Budmo. Mmm. Oh, it's nice. Mmm. Wow, lots of cherries there, huh? It's incredible. By the way, this is like the number one drink in the Ukraine, you think? After beer. After yeah, beer. Yeah, it's probable. Okay. Drunk cherry, the name of the brand, is number one most famous drink. Wow. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I feel it. So the drunk cherry Cherries are also used in pastry. It's called drunk cherry cake, chocolate with drunk cherry, or Schwarzwald cake. Jakuyu, Jakuyu. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Jakuyu. Yeah. The ultimate food experience here in Lviv. We had boar soup. We had chocolate cake. We had, uh, you know, we had duck. We had uh, what else? Cherry. We had coffee. We went to the Manichist uh, Museum, hotel, restaurant. Uh, experience there. This is awesome. Look at this. Incredible. And yeah, guys, that is the experience. I mean, you should definitely do what I just did. It was a half day tour. We started off like at 12:30, and right now it's almost six. You could do everything like that, right? Yeah. The town is not so huge. So on the center, still have one more full day tomorrow here in Lviv. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. We'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Lviv. Okay. Your guide, Diana. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm toasted right now, I'm dead.